So what's the purpose of functionality? When will it be used? Where's the data shown? How is it shown? Where from? And the catch-all, which is my best question, what if? I think we should all be asking that a lot. So understanding the purpose of the functionality would have caught the requirement was not as detailed as possible. Understanding where it be used and understanding how many schools are coming back would have caused a question or two around the data set. Understanding the data, where it came from, where it would be shown, would have probably asked you about a paging strategy or you'd go down a list. And the catch-all and the design, the what-if question. What if there are lots of results? What do we do? So the reason it wasn't caught in execution was fairly simple. The data set under test, which we probably all have quite a lot, was a known small sample. And it was a known risk. But it could have been caught in a number of ways, asking questions as we go. The, the, the sad truth is this sort of mistake happens all the time. And the reason for that, a bit of background to this project, was a waterfall project, and it's all planned out meticulously. However, as time goes on, all those nice test phases become stacked. And in the end, you just have tests, and all your phases are going and you become really numbers driven. The entire project is focused on metrics. How many scripts have you run? How many left? How many defects? When can we go? When are we finished? And it doesn't leave any room for thinking. You're just entirely numbers based. I was asked at the time, why do we need to give testers the, the room to breathe, the room to think? And it was a really odd question, but asked quite often by project <coughs> managers. But our entire being is here because somebody doesn't do something right the first time every time. So why on earth would our test analysis be right the first time we do it and then don't think after that? Things change, facts change, data changes. We need to really think about that. 